Hello and welcome to this quick video about adding an optical flow and rangefinder onto the bottom of this multi-rotor. Now this quad is the one that I built in my quadcopter building for beginner series, originally set up with Betaflight and then swapped over to iNav. And now because we've got iNav, I thought, well, you know what? We've got pretty much all the sensors on this with the exception of two. And that's specifically this little board here. This is a Matek little board. And on here is something called a rangefinder. And it's also an optical flow sensor. Now, why would you want to add an extra little board? Because you know what? As you probably saw in that first video, if you have the compass calibrated and the GPS is all working okay, then it'll do things like position hold and it'll do return to home and it'll fly missions and all kinds of stuff. Well, you get two advantages by adding a little board like this on something like a multi-rotor. First of all, optical flow is like what is on the underside of your computer mouse in that it's actually taking essentially a little video of the ground and comparing the movement moment to moment to figure out which way the quadcopter is moving and to use that data to stabilize. Secondly, the rangefinder is also very handy. As it's coming into land, it'll know exactly how high it is off the ground rather than a bit of guesstimation from the barometer and a bit of hope and prayer from the GPS. Now, I've installed this and set this up uh, because I've done quite a few videos about rangefinders recently. Uh, we've put them in an INAV plane in preparation for INAV 7.1's auto landing, where it now flares at the end. And I've also done videos with people like Ben, who is showing us how to set that up in something like Ardu Pilot in a plane. But I've had a couple of requests for this, so I'm making this video and a special shout out to a patron of mine called Andy, who was one of those who wanted to see how this is done. Couple of caveats around this. This is a very low power rangefinder. It'll only work up to a couple of meters, about six feet. So below head height, it'll have a rough idea of how high it is off the ground. Higher than that, it won't really know. And we will have to set up at the end and tell iNav that anything above probably a range of one and a half meters means that this can kind of be ignored in terms of range finding. More powerful sensors are available and see those other videos where I fitted them. So this is a Matek 309 LOX sensor. They're not particularly expensive, and I've put this one at the back of this model. In terms of how you put it onto your quad, first thing you need to check is that you have a spare UART that you can use that can be configured for MSP. And I've soldered four wires onto the side of the 3901 locked Matek sensor and covered it with heat shrink for protection. I have, however, cut two holes in that protection because it, we need to be able to have a clear view of the ground for the optical flow sensor and the rangefinder needs not to be covered as well. Then I've mounted it on the bottom of the model with the arrow that's on the board pointing to the nose. That's really important in terms of the orientation. We want the movement that's been sent to the quadcopter to match up with how the accelerometer on the quadcopter feels movement as well. We'll check that in a moment. Then I've soldered the four wires from the Matek 3901 LOX sensor onto UART3, which is here on the flight controller. Again, remembering to connect the transmit pin on the sensor to the receive pin on the flight controller and vice versa. Now the rangefinder optical flow is not going to be powered by the flight controller via the USB cable, so you will need to connect a battery first of all, so I've removed the props for the setup here. Once you've done that, then power on the model using a battery, plug it into INF configurator and connect, go into the ports tab and configure the UART that you've just wired up as MSP, save and reboot. When it comes back, go into the configuration tab and configure the rangefinder and the optical flow sensor, both as MSP in configuration and save that too. When it comes back up, you will see both appearing in the top in nice blue color. If it doesn't, then check that the transmit and receive wires are swapped. And don't forget, you do need to power the model from the battery first before connecting it to iNav would be my big tip. This isn't going to be connected. The other big tip is this sensor is going to need at least two centimeters of clearance from the ground when it initializes to initialize properly. So just be aware of that. If your model has legs, make sure it's kind of mounted up in the belly or on a quad like this, I would make sure that its bum is hanging over the edge of the bag or whatever it is on the, when you plug it in so that it initializes cleanly. I'm just putting it over the edge of the desk as I'm testing and setting up here. 
Next job we need to do then is we do need to align the hardware to make sure that it's done. Now, because I've installed mine with the arrow pointing to the nose, this is going to work. But let me show you how to do it if you have done it a different way around. What we have to do is to confirm that the way that the model feels movement is going to be the same way that the optical flow is going to report that movement. So they're going to be in sync, basically, both in the front to back and the side to side orientation. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the debug mode, which is by default set to none. We're going to set it to flow underscore raw. Once we've done that, we're going to save and reboot then go into the sensor tab turn everything off and just turn on the debug stuff here on the right hand side and you'll see these four lines you'll see x and y one of these will be the accelerometer the other one will be from this new sensor that you've plugged in and if you lift the model up a little bit and tilt it gently forwards and backwards you'll start to see that the graphs start to be drawn and what you're looking for is that debug zero and debug two match in terms of their wave profile. So it looks basically the same. They're gonna be maybe slightly different in amplitude, but you're really looking for the same kind of up, when, up and down movement. Similarly, when you go from side to side, you want debug one and debug three to match as well. Now, as you can see here, as I gently move it from side to side, that is working perfectly. So my orientation is right. And that's why it's important, I think, to make sure that the arrow on the sensor is pointing to the nose. If, however, it is not that way round, then what you need to do is go into the CLI and use the align underscore op flow option to change it. And there are four options. You can use each of those. And it's about the relative orientation to the flight controller try each of those in turn and then see which one will get it to look like I've got it here. Once you have, then you can turn off debug mode, put that back to none and you have that set up. Last thing you need to do then is to calibrate power on the model using the battery because we want the optical flow sensor all fired up. Make sure it's powered on with that two centimeter distance at least under it so it initializes cleanly. Then go to the calibration screen, select optical flow calibration, and then again, hold it above the desk or the floor in a well-lit area and tilt the quad side to side and then front to back gently for about 30 seconds and it'll eventually time out when it does. Clicks OK and save and reboot and the calibration's done too. So with those pieces done, you're in a really good place. There's only a handful of additional pro tips. First of all is do remember to always have at least two centimeters clearance under the sensor when you initialize the quad. Like I say, I intend to have it just hanging over the edge of the box that I have it sat on at the field. Uh, but do remember that so it initializes cleanly. Uh, you can also turn on something called INAV Allow Dead Reckoning that will be useful indoors if you have brief GPS outages. You can turn that on. I'm flying this outdoors, so I'm not bothering with that. Other thing you need to do is to set the maximum height that iNav will use the sensor for, the rangefinder in particular. And what you need to do is to go in the CLI and set nav max surface altitude to be whatever it needs to be. This is centimeters, so I've set mine to 150, which is one and a half meters, which is well below the maximum here, but that's just to give me a little bit of safety. In addition to that, there are a number of PID settings that you can set for the position hold. You can increase those when you have one of these. By default, they're pretty loose because you're just relying on the GPS, the accelerometer, and the barrow to keep your quad in that position using these sensors particularly if you are below that kind of two meter one and a half meter height using the optical flow and the rangefinder will keep it very firmly in position so hopefully that helps those of you that were interested in this it is pretty easy and straightforward and andy my patreon hopefully you now understand how to do this on your quad too Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.